Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to walk you through seven steps to help you get started with email marketing. In this video, I'll cover the basics of email marketing to help you start growing your email list and your business through email. You, like everyone else online, are constantly bombarded with offers, ads, new products and services to purchase, information, whatever it is. And so everyone else, your potential clients, are dealing with the same thing. And so chances are they're pretty skeptical. It's gonna take a little bit of time from their first interaction with you until they're ready to purchase your product or service. And email is the best way to take them from someone who's just getting to know you to a client for your business. And this is much better than say social media or your blog as far as taking someone through that process. And why? Because if you think about social media, you post something on your Instagram today, your oldest client, a new client, a potential client, someone who's just coming across you for the first time, all are gonna see the exact same thing. And it doesn't always make sense for that particular person. Email, you can segment that audience and to be able to send specific messages to specific groups so that you can take them from where they are today to being a more faithful client to being a first time client. I'd compare email marketing to eating your broccoli. It's one of those things that you're not that excited about, but you know you should probably do. No one starts a business super excited of, I'm gonna sell so much through email, like let's get going. You'd much rather probably create videos for YouTube or Instagram or design a beautiful website. Email is definitely not sexy. But the thing is people that do email marketing well and have seen some results from it, they're like, I wish I had started this sooner. And so today I wanna to walk you through seven steps so you can get started with email marketing today. Step one, choose an email marketing software. So there's a ton of options out there and this video isn't to go through all the plethora of email marketing options that you have. I'm just gonna mention two today. So I think for a lot of people as they get started, usually the first place they end up with is MailChimp. So I have this relationship with MailChimp, it frustrates me every time I have to open up someone's MailChimp account because it's just not very easy to use. Yeah, it's great that it's free to get started, but yeah, I just don't like to use it. We've been using ConvertKit for the last two years and love it. So it's really easy to segment your audience, to send out automated emails, just really intuitive and easy for anyone to pick up and start using. But for people who are just getting started, they didn't want to spend anything, so usually they end up with MailChimp. And, you know, I would understand why people would use MailChimp previously, but now ConvertKit has a free plan where you can send emails to up to 500 subscribers and you have unlimited access to forms and landing pages. I actually created a video last week on how to create a landing page with ConvertKit. I'll link to that up above here. But honestly, a lot of these work fairly similarly, and so you don't necessarily need to work with ConvertKit or MailChimp. You can choose whatever email marketing software you want and follow through with the rest of the steps. I'll put a link down below in the description where you can sign up for the free plan with ConvertKit. This is our affiliate link and so if you do decide to upgrade at some later date to a paid plan, we will receive a small commission at no extra cost to you. Step number two, Decide what you wanna give away to get people to sign up for your email list. Look, everyone already gets more than enough emails. I, for example, have 22,695 unread messages in my Gmail inbox. I don't need any more. So I'll sign up for emails for two reasons. One is I work in marketing and so I like to see what other people put in their emails. And two, which I think relates to more of you, is I'll sign up for something if I'm getting something in return. And so I'll give you a couple of examples of this. This could work in real life where I was walking down the street months ago and I saw this offer for buy one, get one free massages. So if I can get two massages for the price of one, yeah, sign me up. The same thing happens online. So I recently decided to buy some plants for my apartment. You're gonna see one over here pretty soon in my YouTube videos. And guess what, Instagram figured that out and so they started showing me ads for plants for my apartment. And so what I wanna do is show you some of the websites and the offers that they had to sign up for their email list. The first one here is with Bloomscape. Want to join a real plant family? So they have exclusive offers and tips for caring for your plant and ask you to sign up. This probably isn't the best option. They're not really giving away anything but tips and I'm currently shopping for plants. I'm not sure if those tips are any good or not. I'm probably not gonna give my email address here. Company number two is The Sill. So if you take a look at The Sill, they're offering 10% off, plus plant tips and promotions and other things. And they're asking for my email address and my phone number. So the thing is here, yeah, I'm getting a discount, but they're asking for my phone number. If people don't like giving away their email address, they definitely don't like giving away their phone number. And if we go to the third option with Modern Garden, you can see just for giving my email address, I can get 10% off, which is what I would recommend. The thing is the more that you ask for, 
from a potential subscriber, the less likely they are to subscribe. A lot of times I'd like to ask for first name and email so I can send them individualized emails, but the more you ask for, you're gonna get less signups. So if you're asking for phone number, you better actually plan on using their phone number or just don't ask for it. So outside of offering discounts, what most companies end up doing is offering free information. So you can see as I'm on HubSpot's website right now, I'm reading one of their blog posts and they have an offer for a video marketing bundle. And so I can click on this and it takes me to a landing page where I can sign up and get more information on getting started with video marketing. And so this is probably the more common way of what you want to start thinking about is what information could you put together that you know already that you could use to get people to sign up for your email list. So five formats that you could use to share information and grow your email list are as follows. Number one is host a webinar. Webinars are phenomenal. I recently did a video on 10 reasons why you should host webinars that I'll link to up above. You could check that out. But we recently held a webinar related to growing your YouTube channel um, in Spanish for our Spanish YouTube channel and Instagram, and we had 500 people sign up. And so webinars are phenomenal because it's a live event. You interact with the audience and educate them. And so it's something that generally people are, are more than willing to sign up for and see the value. in. Format number two is a video course. An example of this is we have a free course of how to design your website in Squarespace. So there's 20 videos that we uploaded to Teachable and created a course around. So this is great for people that are just getting started, growing their business and need a website. They can sign up for the course and learn how to do that at no charge. And so you can think about what video content like that that you could turn into some type of training and giveaway. Format number three would be an email course. And so how this works is you could write out information in kind of a course format where each, each day someone gets an email related to a specific topic. An example that we're working on right now is creating an email course for starting your personal brand. I'll link to that up above if you're interested in building your personal brand and you wanna see what an automated email course might look like. Format number four would be an ebook or guide. So I'm sure you've downloaded some of these in the past, but putting together some type of guide around a particular topic that you're knowledgeable of and exchanging that for someone's email. So the fifth format would be some type of a checklist. So this is a condensed version of something, let's say for what we've been talking about before. It could be, here's the 10 things that you need to do before you publish a video on YouTube. And so this could be one page, maybe a couple of pages, a, a, a short guide. And so now I wanna talk about some of the pros and cons of the five format types we just discussed. So webinars are great, but the thing that you need is a webinar software. You need to put together a presentation and ideally you show yourself on camera. The video course, obviously you need to record videos and have somewhere to host those videos. Number three, the email course, you need to do that through automated email sequences and usually on, well, on ConvertKit and MailChimp, you need the, the paid plans to be able to do those. Format four, so eBooks or some type of guide, you probably need to one, be able to write and two, some type of design work to make it look appealing as well. The fifth format is somewhat similar to the guides. You probably need to do a little bit of graphic design work as well as the, the content, the written content for the checklist. Step number three, decide where you wanna get signups for your email list. So there's four places in general where you could get signups for your email. The first place is through forms. So the most common place you'll see a form is that in the footer of almost any website. Someone knows if they're browsing your website, chances are they can scroll down to the bottom and there's a place to give their email. You're not gonna get a ton of volume of signups here, but it's one of those places where you should have one just in case. Another place could be while reading your blog post, in the middle you say, hey, do you want more information related to X topic? We have a guide to that. And so while someone's reading the blog post, they see the form, they sign up there. The second way to get signups are through landing pages. So landing pages are great because it's a website that has one particular offer. Sign up for this or leave. It doesn't have all the navigation of your normal website. And so you saw that on the HubSpot page earlier where I clicked on the blog link and then went to a landing page that only talked about the video marketing bundle. Another example is if you check out our ConvertKit landing page video that I'll kind of walk you through step-by-step step on how to set up a landing page. So the third way to get signups are through pop-ups. So, so an example of this would be the different plant company websites that I showed you earlier. So I was on their website and all of a sudden an offer popped up and I could decide if I wanted to sign up or not. And so those can basically be designed to pop up immediately when you land on a website or you could have it pop up after a certain number of seconds of being on the website on only specific pages, 
or you can have it pop up on what's called an exit intent. So if you scroll to the top of a page, as if you're gonna probably close the browser, the pop-up comes on screen when you're about to close the tab as kind of a last ditch effort of getting someone's email before they leave. The fourth way to get email signups are through what are called announcement bars. So that can be at the top of the page or at the bottom of the page, basically announcing a specific offer and soliciting your email there. So here's an example on Ryan Holiday's website with an announcement bar along the top. With these different formats for collecting emails, um, the first two, so forms and landing pages, you can do for free using ConvertKit. The second two, so pop-ups and announcement bars, you can do if you have a website in Squarespace. We end up using lead pages for our landing pages, announcement bars, and pop-ups. It is more of a premium service, but if you're looking for something that's not offered um, with what you're using right now, that might be an option to check out. Step number four is you need to decide how you're gonna generate traffic so that people see the offer that you work so hard to put together. So you could be hosting a webinar, have this great guide, this video course. If no one actually sees the offer, you have a bunch of wasted work and your email list is not gonna grow. And so you wanna think through ahead of time, how am I gonna generate traffic and get signups? The first way that I wanna talk about is YouTube. So we have a handful of videos on YouTube that talk about different offers that we have. And so every day people see those videos and can decide if they wanna sign up for our email list or not. The second way could be through social media. So you can post blog posts or direct links to a particular offer and get signups through the social media accounts that you have. The third way to generate traffic could be through ads. So you can run ads on YouTube, on Instagram, Facebook, Google search. There's a ton of options here and deciding which one your particular audience is using and what type of ads need to be created to get in front of that audience. But that's something you can turn on very quickly at high volume and get a lot of people seeing your offer if you you know, have the budget to run ads. You can also generate a ton of traffic through SEO. And so if you're creating content and people are searching for specific phrases around that content, you could be showing up in search results day in and day, day out through following best practices for SEO. The thing is SEO is fairly competitive, especially for certain keywords, and it can take weeks or months before you begin to start showing up in search results, even if you're doing everything well. So the last way that I'm gonna mention to generate traffic could be through a podcast. So for example, we're in the process of launching a podcast in Spanish in a couple weeks and in English, probably a few months from now, but everything audio is really popular right now. So podcasts, audiobooks, people love consuming content passively through audio while they're doing something else. And so you could launch your own podcast where you teach people, interview people, and talk about your business and potential offers you might have and grow your email list. Or you could do an outreach effort and reach out to other podcasts, appear on their podcast and talk about your business and grow that way. Step number five, segment your audience. So now that you're starting to grow your email list, you wanna think about what type of people are signing up for your email list. Do they have different interests? Are some clients, some aren't clients? Maybe some are your top clients. You wanna think about how you wanna break this up into different groups. So to talk about our business, some of the examples that we were already talking about today is, we have people that sign up for a Squarespace course. We have people that sign up for a personal branding course. We have other people interested in our YouTube guide. Some people may be interested in all of that. Some people may only be interested in a particular part of it. And so it's important to segment the audience so you know what their interests are, how they've interacted with your business, and to send them specific messages based on who they are. Step number six is send out periodic emails. In ConvertKit, these are called broadcast messages. Maybe you think of them as your email newsletter. But basically, you don't want to get someone to sign up for your email list today, and you don't contact them again for months or years, and then say, hey, I'm selling something now. Are you interested? They're going to even forget how they signed up and why they're even on your email list to begin with. And so it's a good thing to keep in touch with people over time. I'm not saying spam people every single day with new offers for your business, but you need to stay in touch with some regularity. So this could be bi-weekly, monthly, but every so often reaching out to this audience. And so you wanna think through, what can I give away that's valuable to them, that's not selling? An example of this is Ryan Holiday that I mentioned earlier. He started writing about books he liked. He grew his email list talking about the books he liked. And this was years before he even wrote his first book. And so a couple years after starting his email list, he's like, oh, hey, by the way, I have a book. Are you interested? And so if you can think about what can you give away that's valuable, people will be happy that they're on your email list. 
two emails that I like getting from people that very rarely sell would be someone like Tim Ferriss or Pat Flynn. There is another content creator that I am subscribed to their email list, which I don't really like getting their emails because I feel like they're too salesy. They basically have a handful of different premium courses that they sell. And I feel like on a weekly basis, they essentially rotate between selling me one course or another course. There's really not a lot of things that they just give away for free. And so I wouldn't recommend doing something like that with your broadcast messages. Spend more time helping people and less time selling. Step number seven is create an automated email sequence. So this is probably one of the more advanced topics within email marketing, but probably one of the most powerful tools as well. And to give you an example of this would be our personal branding course. So if someone signs up today, they receive email one today, email two tomorrow, email three the day after that. If someone signed up on January 1st, 2021, they would get email one on the first, email two on January 2nd, and email three on the third. This is great because you can let someone get to know you, you can educate them, you can build trust all in an automated way over time. And so someone is taken through a particular sequence based on when they sign up for something as opposed to sending everything out to the same person at the same time when someone's a client, someone's not, whatever. This is where you can put together a sequence of emails. I'd recommend doing something educationally where you're building trust over a period of time. In the later part of the email sequence, you can begin to talk about your business, maybe present a particular offer. An example could be that someone could sign up with the free consultation. So they have say five emails that are educational. And then after that, you could say, hey, by the way, if you wanna schedule a free 30 minute call, you know, here's a link to my Calendly where you can schedule you know, your free consultation. Or let's say for our personal branding, we have a free course that you get emails over 10 days. And then we have a premium course that we start to talk about towards the end of that email sequence. So we've educated you a little bit gotten you started on building your personal brand and then we could say sell a premium course after we've you know taken you so far along that path and built up trust with you and we could say hey if you purchase now within the first week you get x dollars off your course that's essentially how automated sequences work you can set up an email or emails to be sent periodically to someone and you know have them get to know you on autopilot Unfortunately, the automated sequences aren't part of the free plan for ConvertKit or MailChimp or any others that I know of. So I would recommend first getting started with email marketing, build your email list, then maybe upgrade and start experimenting with automated sequences. All right, so hopefully going through those seven steps help give you some ideas on how you can get started with email marketing and use this powerful tool to grow your business. I know we covered a ton in this video today. It was fairly broad and we didn't go that deep in any one of the topics. If there's something you'd like us to cover in more detail or if you have any questions, as always, you can leave that down below in the comment section. If you're interested in signing up for our personal branding course, you can sign up to that up above here. If you wanna watch other videos related to email marketing and ConvertKit, I'll link to those down below. Until next time, bye-bye.